Chapter Twenty Nine, The North Star. Beautiful stars, aren't they? Said Grandfather Masaki almost to himself, walking slowly with Jiro. It was nearing autumn, and the sky was bright with millions of stars. Their pathway could clearly be seen across the vast sea of rice fields. Jiro did not reply to his grandfather, but looked up at the starlit sky. He was proud to walk with him, but could not feel at ease as he used to. He did not understand why the old man had decided to take him away so suddenly. Why did he offer to do so? As he walked along the white pathway with him, the question grew bigger and bigger. Mixed with his lonesome feeling of parting from Yuichi and Haruko, the boy's little heart was tormented with the thought that his family had broken down. The scenes of the auction appeared in his mind, one after another. He saw a number of people among the scattered articles. His father was coming to him, smiling faintly like a floating balloon. Jiro recognized a tint of lament in the smile. "Look, that—that's the North Star," said Grandfather at a crossroads, pointing to the distant sky. Jiro turned his eyes in that direction, but did not know which star it was. His eyes were still chasing his father's melancholic image. "Didn't you learn anything about it at school?" he said. I don't know," said Jiro. "Look, you can see those seven stars in the shape of a dipper over there, can't you?" said the old man. "They're called Big Dipper." Jiro recognized seven stars one by one and finally found the North Star. It was, however, not so bright as he had expected. Jiro was a little disappointed. When you are at sea, you make that star your mark," said Grandfather. "It does not move, but stays up there all the time." The old man started to walk again. Jiro was surprised to know that stars could move or stay still, and was interested in Grandfather's explanation. "Then are the other stars always moving?" he asked. "Yes, they usually are." Said Grandfather, "Those seven stars are also moving around the North Star. You'll know that in an hour or so, Jiro. A star that stayed still forever." His little mind was occupied with that idea. Walking along with his grandfather, Jiro tried not to lose sight of the unmoving star. Never in his life had he been so deeply moved. Something immortal was beginning to grow in his mind. He had experienced a similar sensation at his grandfather's death, but it was only temporary. His consciousness was shattered by his conflict with grandmother. Tonight, however, the situation was quite different. He was totally fascinated by the immortality of the North Star. On the other hand, the monotonous patter pattering of his sandals sounded to whisper in his ear what he was destined to be in the future. Both his brothers could stay at home. Why did he have to go to Grandfather Masaki's after he was already moved from Ohama's to the Hondas, which was the real home to him? Where would his father go? What would he do then? He'd never seen Ohama since he went away. Maybe he couldn't see his father again either. Those questions came up in his mind one after another. Jiro was not old enough to sense something eternal or des destiny, but felt a sheer loneliness he had never experienced before. Countless stars were twinkling in the sky. And the pattering sound of his sandals echoed as if he followed his grandfather 
as he followed his grandfather in silence. Are you sleepy, Jiro? said the old man, but he kept silent. Let me take your hand in case you should stumble, he said. The palm of his grandfather's hand was shriv shriv shriveled, but he felt warmth coming from inside. He was happy again and recovered a feeling of cheerfulness. How long am I going to stay at your house? asked Jiro. As long as you like, answered the old man. As long as I like? He repeated the phrase, feeling half pleased and half uneasy. Do you want to go back soon? Well, no, he stammered, shaking his head, but something dark lay smoldering in his heart. If you want to go back, you can do so any time, said grandfather after a moment of thought. But probably you won't be able to see your family at that house again. The old man's words echoed deep in his heart and made him aware of the existence of the North Star afresh with the monotonous sound of his sandals. Jilo felt like crying. But you don't have to worry, said Grandfather Masaki. What is important for a man is his heart. If, he, if you have a sincere mind, a house is no problem. Jiro was too young to understand his grandfather's words. Once again, he thought of his father's desolate face. Was grandfather Masaki telling that his father was not sincere? No, he couldn't be insincere. Jiro had never met a man more honest than his father. Never had he scolded him unless he was in the wrong. All of a sudden, Jiro remembered that his father liked sake or rice wine. He drank it not only by himself, but sometimes invited other people to drink with him. One evening he called in several men known as rowdies in the village. Jiro waited to them. It was a party for reconciliation, reconciliation after an argument but a trifling topic caused two of them to quarrel against each other again under the influence of the liqueur. One was a big man with a pug, pug nose, bushy eyebrows and fishy eyes. When he was a boy, he was a peddler of bean buns. So everybody nicknamed him Tora the Bun Seller his opponent was called Gon the Fingerless, who had his little finger cut off in a fight. He was pale-faced, thin, and sarcastic. How rude you are to say such a thing in the company of our host, roared the big bun seller in response to Fingerless was. Then their quarrel grew hot and fierce. The bun seller complained clumsily in his husky voice, while Fingerless attacked his opponent with shrewd thrust of his tongue. Shunsuke was listening to their dispute in silence till it became hot enough to break into a fight at any moment. Just then he sat up straight. Tora, gone! He roared to each of them and abruptly took off his upper clothes to expose his bare body. All right, if you like fighting so much, you can do it. Slash or stab each other or whatever you like. But listen, once I was asked to medi mediate your dispute, I won't allow you to have a fight before my eyes. What you have to do first is, you know, to take my life. He hit his bare breast with his right hand. It was threatening enough to end the rascal's quarreling. quarreling. They stopped quarreling and begged his pardon. As he watched the scene beside his father, he was scared but was also impressed by his father's heroic manner. At times, Jiro had a fight against other boys. 
His speedy and daring tactics might have been influenced by his father to some extent. As he walked slowly with his grandfather under the starry sky, however, such memories seemed to be of little importance. He wondered if his father had really intended to act as mediator that night. Was it right for father to have a drink with those bad guys? Maybe his keeping those men caused his family to become poor and finally break down. It was the first time for Jiro to think of his father in that way. His drinking was a little annoying, but he never considered it good or bad. On the contrary, everything he did was right to Jiro, so he would sit by and wait on him when he drank, though his mother blamed him. He felt sorry for conceiving such an idea of his father, but once it entered his mind, it would not leave him easily. The more he thought of his father, the more anxious he became about his behavior. What are you do going to be, Jiro? asked Grandfather Masaki unexpectedly. Jiro thought it out of place because he was sure his grandfather was also thinking of his father. Besides, he had never thought of what he would become in the future, though some of his friends proudly said that they were going to be a general or a minister. What was most important to him was to know who would be really kind to him. I see, said Grandfather a little reproach reproachfully. You haven't thought anything about your future, have you? What did you want to be when you are a boy, Grandpa? He said. Well, uh, said the old man, seemingly at a loss. In those days, we didn't have to worry about our future. We had only to succeed to our father's occupation. Can't we do so anymore? He asked again. I don't think so, but, said Grandfather, questioned closely again. My father is a public servant, isn't he? Yes, he is, he said. I'd like to be a public officer like him, he said. But isn't he going to resign soon? Then you, do you also give up your plan, Jiro? I want to stay by him as much as possible, he said. The old man looked at the boy intently in the darkness and started again in silence. My father is an honest person, isn't he, Grandpa? Grandpa? said Jiro abruptly. Of course he is. Why, he said, why do you ask me such a question? What do you think of my father's drinking? Isn't it bad? Maybe it is, he said. But it'd be all right if he has an honest mind. The old man's words did not satisfy Jiro, but he did not feel like disturbing him anymore. The sound of their steps echoed in the darkness and they came to the edge of the old man's village. The greatest man in the world, said Grandfather Masaki, is a man like your father who is really kind to other people. He sold those things simply because he got short of money by helping a lot of needy people. Can you become a great person like your father, Jiro? If you can't get along with some persons, you won't be able to become a great man. Jiro thought he was talking about his mother and grandmother, not taking it as a lesson for him. Their mother and grandmother can't be either of them, he said bluntly. Do you think so? said grandfather. What about yourself, Jiro? I'm not great either, he said frankly, contrary to the old man's expectation. Don't you want to be a great man? Yes, but I... Are you not confident of yourself? If I have Ohama by me, I'm sure I can be great, he said. Grandfather stopped again at his words. He 
grasped Jiro's hands and hugged him. Looking into his eyes closely, he said, Can't you forget Ohama yet? The old man's voice was trembling. Jiro felt that he was being scolded, so he pulled back his hands. I'm not scolding you, Jiro, he said. If you want to see her, I'll arrange it for you someday. So you should do your best to be a great person. Understand? Jiro was about to burst into tears, but held back with an effort, nodding to his grandfather. When they came to the Masakis, a big star ran diagonal, diagonally across the northern sky. The moment he gave a short cry, the shooting star disappears into the vast sky. Before he was aware of it, Jiro turned to the North Star. He would have to go through a lot of experiences before he comes to learn by himself that eternity, destiny and love are firmly connected to each other.